What does a group of high school kids performing a Broadway musical have to do with raising money for the Tennessee Aquarium? The musical is Big River, and the Big River for these people in the audience, all volunteer fundraisers, is the challenge to raise a million dollars. That'll put the aquarium one step closer to reaching its goal of 45 million. That's a lot more money than the 12 million first projected for an aquarium when the idea surfaced back in 1981. At the time, everyone seemed to agree the project would have to be funded through a combination of public and private support. In August of 85, representatives from Chattanooga Venture asked Governor Lamar Alexander to fund several local projects, including an aquarium. Alexander really liked the idea and told them to set their sights even higher. It was probably touch and go fairly early on, but I would say that from the moment Lamar Alexander uh, picked up the stick and began to wave it and began to convert uh, very early on some very important individuals, uh, there was never any question in my mind that it was, that it was gonna happen. One of those won over to the idea was Lookout Mountain millionaire Jack Lupton. In late 1985, he showed up at the courthouse and shocked commissioners with this announcement. I'm going to personally commit to you this morning a very large portion from Lyndhurst, and then the rest of it is up to you. Lupton put up $14 million in seed money, much of it from the Lyndhurst Foundation, which he controls. Less than a month later, Governor Lamar Alexander came through on his promise by budgeting $3.5 million for a state aquarium, and later Governor McWhorter added another $4 million. But not everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. Some local citizens feared the project would leave them with an open-ended tax burden. Others were suspicious because the so-called power structure was behind it. Finally, the aquarium's most vocal opponent called for a referendum. And I don't believe that the people here, with our streets and roads in the shape they're in now, I don't believe they want their money to go for that. Fearing the aquarium might lose in a referendum, developers decided to nip the controversy in the bud. They announced the project had received enough private contributions to build the aquarium without tax dollars. The $7.5 million the state had already allocated for the aquarium wasn't lost. Instead, the River City Company decided to spend it on this plaza that surrounds the aquarium and pay for the various roads, parks, and other public improvements. I think that it was perceived that the aquarium was too controversial that it was too difficult for people to understand what it was, that it was too difficult for people to digest the promise that many people felt it held for Chattanooga. Today, the aquarium is just shy of its $45 million goal, and a lot of the $42 million pledged so far has come from major corporations, like DuPont, who donated $500,000 in March. DuPont has an investment in this community. Uh, our plant's been here for 42 years. We're trying to make a statement with this gift that we're going to be here for 42 more years, and, and our employees and their families, and over 1,500 retirees and their family can benefit from the aquarium and the whole renaissance on the river that will be around that plaza area. Other large corporate donors include Digital, which will supply the aquarium's computers, TVA, and Komatsu. Now the fundraising focus is shifting to the general public. Last week, these volunteers hit the streets. They're asking for pledges of at least $1,000. What you get in return is admission to the Nickajack Circle. That means sponsorship of the aquarium's largest exhibit featuring native fish from the Tennessee well, River. Might be, there might be some problem with the state of the economy now, but I think that if everybody is committed, as most of the folks that are here in this room, that every effort will be made to raise the dollars we need. Now, if you don't have $1,000 like I do and still want to help out, aquarium officials expect most people to participate by applying for annual memberships at a cost of $25 or $50 a year. Uh, families will be admitted free and be entitled to other educational benefits. Stephen, it's obvious Jack Lupton has played a key role in getting the aquarium going, as you mentioned. Can you put into perspective just how big his part was? Well, as one insider told me last week, if it wasn't for Jack Lupton, there wouldn't be an aquarium. And by our last count, he has contributed about $10 million from his personal fortune and another $11 million from the Lyndhurst Foundation, which he controls. 